many years. In this corner of the Arabian Peninsula, tribes came and went. The people were tested by sun and wind, salt and sand. It wasn't until the 19th century that the Baniyas tribe, led by the Al-Maktoum family, formed a village along a creek where the desert met the sea. The villagers fished, dove for pearls, and bartered with merchants who traveled by camel and dhow across vast expanses of sand and ocean. A thriving trade center emerged, hinting at great things to come. In the 20th century, the vision of the Sheikh, Sheikh Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum, changed this place forever. With the formation of the Emirates in 1971, a city like no other was born. Welcome to Dubai. Overnight, from the village rose what is today one of the most iconic skylines in the world. The city grew in size and wealth, becoming a global leader economically and culturally. But its people adhered to an ancient tradition, welcoming and embracing visitors from around the world. And little did I know, they held a strong connection to the water. And who would have guessed one of the keys to unlocking this great city would be through fishing? This is a place where anything can happen. The fastest cars on the planet, the tallest building in the world, meals by some of the world's best chefs, mega resorts, and all around, making the impossible possible. If you dream it, it can be done. It's the most modern, multicultural, and dynamic urban fishing destination on the planet. Let me show you why this place is on its way to becoming the world's most visited city. And against the backdrop of this metropolis, why its fly fishing scene is unique and incredible. Here's what your average day can look like, pre or post fishing. Start the day with a little tea time. The world's worst golfer, Frank Smethers, steps up to the tee in Dubai. Oh boy. Nobody's expecting much, least of all him. That's in someone's living room. Then pick up some new thread. Wow, when you look good, you fish good. Hi, I'm Frank Smethurst, and welcome to Slicing the World. A light lunch. No idea where that went. Then a little downtime by the pool. Infinity pool, Dubai skyline. Oh, hi, beautiful. A quick dose of art. A few turns on this slope. followed by a few turns on this slope. This is so amazing. One of the best places to stay cool in Dubai is here at the indoor ski area. Hi, guys. 
How amazing are these? Dubai is a major skydiving destination, and this is the part where I'd jump out of a plane, but much like this little guy, this bird doesn't fly. But if I did, here's how the city and the fishery would look. But as you can see from this view, I mean, look at all that fishable water. I mean, fly fishing is growing in Dubai because this place is teeming with fish. South African Nick Bowles with Ocean Active has pioneered fly fishing off the Dubai coastline and knows these waters and fish better than anyone. When I heard Frank was coming to Dubai, I was extremely excited. He's someone I truly respect and Frank is an iconic figure in the fly fishing industry. He's, uh, he's a guide, he's been uh, a product rep, he's uh, been a TV host. As probably he was one of the first fly fishing films that uh, I watched was Running Down the Man that uh, struck a chord with me of you know, crazy guys running down a beach in the middle of nowhere catching these amazing fish and that uh, was instilled in something on me that uh, now I want to do something similar and that's what's driven you know, that that type of desire is something that's driven uh, you know, my quest to find fish in Dubai and places that are, are not fished on a regular basis. So to have him come and fish with us in Dubai and to see his uh, enjoyment and excitement on catching our queen fish has uh, truly made us happy and shows that we've got a, a remarkable fishery here. If you're doing it right, being an angler makes a person a more perceptive human being. And therein lies the allure. So to catch fish, you must first find fish. And I know that sounds so simple, and it is, and it isn't. One environmental cue that helps us locate fish just about anywhere in salt water is the behavior of birds. In Dubai, this is taken to a higher level and more subtle nuance. It's not just about finding a flock. It's about discerning the birds in the flock actually shadowing fish. Crack the code, study the birds, and enjoy the spoils. Satisfaction in fly fishing really rises in relation to how visual the experience is. And the surface-oriented pack hunting, bait chasing, and slashing queenfish, well, they speak for themselves. Likewise, it's like this crazy mix between a tarpon and a jack. <laughs> Woo! That's what it's about. Worth coming around the world for. I'll tell you what. Wow. It's unbelievable to see this fish right here in the shadows of the skyscrapers. Here she is, right here next to all that. Unbelievable. So this is the world's largest jack mackerel. So it's its own sort of special species of, subspecies of jack. And they've got attributes of both mackerel with these scutes back here and then 
This is their own deal, all these really sort of evil spines. The queenfish for us is most probably the perfect fly fishing species. You know, it's, uh, it's big, it's uh, really aggressive. They swim in shoals, they jump, they eat a fly readily, you know, and, and they big, wide and silver. And for us, you know, the, the queenfish is a, is a truly unique and amazing fly fishing uh, species. We've got a few busting fish out of the back, so you know, we can run and gun, get onto the fish. It's exciting, it's all sight fishing, and that's pretty much what's, what's so appealing about this. It's, it's all sight fishing, and that's the strength of the queenfish. And it's got a big eye, it's got that big mouth, you know, he, he hunts from underneath the, underneath the bait, comes up, smashes, goes down, so it's, it's extremely fast action. I mean, you've seen it, you know, the, the first day, it's like, cross, yeah, cross, cross, up, one o'clock, three o'clock. You know, we're getting all of our directions wrong, and it, it's a bit of an organized chaos, I like to call it. So. Wonderfully hectic. <laughs> the fishing can be extremely leisurely and mellow, or it can be extremely exciting and high paced with, you know, we got uh, chasing down birds, we got busting fish, sight fishing, fish jumping, and it can be quite a lot of chaos, but basically it's whatever you put into it, you get out. You can use the purple one too, all yeah. right? Then Zaki's going to use this one. We initially moved to Dubai about 15 years ago when my wife took a job with Emirates. Uh, we were supposed to only stay uh, three years, then five years, has turned into 15 years. Uh, Dubai is a truly amazing place to raise a family and both of our kids have been born here. It's extremely safe and just an amazing environment to, to live in. And we're extremely lucky to be able to spend so much time on the water uh, with the kids as a family and with clients. And for the kids, uh, it's amazing on what they can learn uh, on the water compared to what they can learn on land. Zaki, what is this, my boy? My first big golden. Yeah. A quick afternoon session off Dubai with the family and kids. And uh, Zaki's first golden you on You whip a golden. <laughs> you whip the golden, eh? I feel really fortunate to not only call Dubai home, but to be able to share this fishery with so many clients traveling here from around the world. Uh, Dubai is a truly unique fishery and we've been here since the beginning and we're just really happy that we can uh, offer this to both international and local clients. You have to possess a lot of curiosity to be an angler. The more curious you are, the more you want to know about the world around you. And that includes the cultures of the places we fish. While Dubai's shown me its world-class offerings and its recreational fishery, there's a deeper level of tradition and culture here. I want to learn more. In 
In spite of its staggeringly fast development, Dubai holds tightly to a traditional core. Headed to the spice sook. On the fringe of skyscrapers sits the old gold, textile, and spice sooks. And here, moored a stone's throw from the city's core, Arabian dows. In spite of the rapid pace of development here in Dubai, the city clings tightly to its traditional roots. Down here on the waterfront is the Dow community that live in these amazing boats and they ply the sea for originally pearls, but now fish. And I get to go out and meet the captain and crew of this Arabian Dow. Emirati angler Mohammed al Faour is going to show me the traditional maritime aspects and fishing traditions of Dubai. Nice to meet you. Mohammed. Yes. Good to see you. And you are? Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Frank. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Mohammed al Faour, and I've been living in Dubai for my whole life. Tell him, as one fisherman to another, I I'm thrilled to meet him. In terms of fishing, it's been something that really has been with me since childhood. My earliest memory was probably around the age of five years old, whether it be rigging up baits for my grandfather or untangling lines for my uncle. He's saying thank you very much. All right. I'm looking to study marine biology, uh, really spurred on from my past experience with fishing, and uh, I'm hopefully going to be coming back to Dubai after my studies and uh, working here. Typically, urban development is detrimental to a fishery. In the case of Dubai, building the islands and reefs has created habitat and enhanced the fishery. Additionally, these waters are safeguarded by smart netting regulations. Commercial fishermen have to set their nets farther off the coastline, which in turn creates a win-win situation for a lot of stakeholders. Traditional fish merchants can make a living and at the same time, inshore nurseries are protected and the commercial fishery is enriched. Many cities around the world cannot boast the quality of coastline water, habitat, and wise fishing regulations that have been created and put into place here in Dubai. And they've been fishing these waters for centuries. Perhaps there's something to learn here. Yes, it was truly amazing having Frank. Being able to teach him and, and show him all the techniques we use here locally was something really special. We went on the Dow. We, uh, taught him a lot of techniques. So first one being pulling up traps, or we'd say gargur. We just helped pull this fish, fish trap with these guys. There's this incredible methodology that's been used forever. It's, it's amazing because they're catching the same fish that we were chasing. We're chasing them with fancy flies and boats and stuff like that. And these guys just put out a trap and caught just as many as we did. So there's a bunch of queen fish in here. And then, uh, what's the name of this? What's the name of this fish again? Yum Yum. So there's <clears throat> queen fish and Yum Yum, these small striped fish in here. But it's amazing to pull a fish trap in sort of this amazing method of antiquity and have it full of fish. You know, here's a great way to fish that people have used for thousands of years. And honestly, I've never seen it uh, in practice. It's really incredible. I see they're using leftover bread from hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, they, they, bait the, they bait the fish trap with bread. Bread brings in the small fish, and the small fish bring in the big fish. And then they've got this one-way funnel. The fish pushes itself into the mesh, and then it can't really figure out how to get back out. What's and, very interesting is that uh, this is all made by hand. 
So when they bring the boats back, see the hitting they're doing now? What they're doing is they're cleaning all the algae off it. Right. So that it, it's not as, it's, it doesn't look so opaque on the bottom. Yeah, pretty much. And it's so interesting. They're really conserving food because those are probably hamburger bread. It looks that like no it. one ate. It looks and like. So they just used it to. Uh, how great is that? Instead of instead of taking your taking your dinner to the compost, put your compost into the fish trap and get dinner. Well, this is a week's worth of dinner right here. Really, it was truly an honor to have Frank come and be able to not only teach him about what we do, but have him teach us about how they fish in other parts of the world. I mean, not just fly fishing, but fishing in general. Thankfully, we were quite successful with that. Then we took those fish home, uh, some of them, and we had a fantastic meal where I taught him how to eat traditionally. There's a certain way that you eat fish here, but of course it's very central to our culture. While it was humorous at times, it was still very rewarding for me. I am old and my legs are sore. Mm. We'll take a piece. Mm -hmm. We'll find some rice. But in case you want a bigger bite. Uh -huh. Perfect. Mm? Hey, you want to make it like a bowl. You don't want to leave any pieces falling out. Squeeze it. Oh, squeeze, squeeze it? it. Yeah. Try and squeeze it a little bit more so it melts into your lip. Thank you, Muhammad. Not the first time I've said that today, either. <laughs> Once it's intact, that way you don't, get, you don't get any spillage. It comes a bite. Easy. Okay, and just <clears throat> and do it in one. One. Just one. Yeah. If you're happy with that size, go do it in one. Cheers. Yeah. How do you like it? I mean, clearly not enough people know about it. I, to, to think, you're 20 minutes away from potentially some of the world's best fly fishing, right? And you look, and it, the skyline is right there. I just hope people can recognize that. You know, this place has more to offer than, than just um, luxury. My instinct for you, Mohammed, is that you are going to be one of the fishing spirit guides here in Dubai. No if, if not already. Yeah, yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> well, well on your way. You're going to be the the fam most Dubai's most famous local <laughs> fisherman. You see how see how everything's still moving around a little bit? Yeah. That's over time as you get more confident and you start putting more th thread pressure on there. Okay. The entire, the foundation of the entire fly will be stronger because, you know, all the wraps. After that, we came back home and he was able to teach me how to tie some flies, which I was really looking forward to actually. To your will. And ultimately, see, I pull that tight. Well, Sitting there with him, tying those flies, him sharing his techniques with me, me sharing ideas of what works here in terms of local patterns, was really something I enjoyed and cherished. One of the things that I really like for flies, uh, bad knots, good glue. I'm humbled by the doors this simple passion has unlocked. I feel like everybody in this world is really just looking for an authentic human connection. Meeting this young man, Muhammad, has been an unforeseen bonus. 
despite growing up on the opposite side of the planet, he reminds me of myself when I was a young angler, just smarter. He's full of passion, inquisitive, and fish on the brain 24-7. He has so many questions for me, yet after every encounter, I feel like I'm learning the most from him. At the end of the day, this is what fly fishing really gives me, gives us all. Authenticity, friendship, connection, a reminder that we all have more in common than we realize. Seeing the local fly fishing scene uh, growing and developing is, uh, is really cool. And uh, for us to mentor young local anglers is, uh, is extremely important. Mohammed is most probably one of the most enthusiastic game for any fly fishing, any fishing that there is. And it's, for us, it's, it's fantastic to see someone coming through and uh, enjoying fly fishing in, in our local waters there. On that proper man. teaching you some patience now. Oh, yeah. Stick with it, Mohammed. You're doing great. Oh, boy, you, that was him jumping all the way out here, I think. Because you're back. That's backing. That's backing? Oh, my God. I think so. I've never been taken to backing before. No, you're you're going to be there in a big way. You've got a beautiful fish on here. Just keep doing what you're doing. Let me just go for him. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna take it back to you, see if you can get it back to me. What piece of that? Yes! Alhamdulillah, ya Rabb, alhamdulillah. <sighs> biggest queen fish I've hooked in my life. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. Well, Harvard. Unbelievable, right? unbelievable. Check him out. Look at that. Look at those beautiful five spots. Boy, they're well named. This powerful what a, tail. What a beautiful oh. queen fish. Being able to fish with Frank this afternoon, truly amazing. <laughs> yes! Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Exactly. Did I say it right? Yep. Shukran. Off one. <laughs> the fact that I was able to connect with someone from a completely different ethnic background and immediately know what we're talking about. Whether I spoke English or Arabic, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that he was from a completely different culture, and immediately over fishing, we connected. And that connection is something that really has tied me to this sport and to the love of the ocean in general. And that's something that I want to share with the rest of my community and the rest of the world, hopefully. I think an important aspect of human sanity relates to our ability to get away, have some downtime, decompress. More and more, paddleboarding is providing me with that release. It's so simple to slip away for a few hours. There's no motors or mechanical sounds. It's great exercise, and it's just solitude and simplicity. And if everything goes right, sometimes a reward.
Dubai is clearly an amazing place to visit, safe and welcoming to people from all corners of the world, including hardcore anglers. I've traveled a lot of places, been to a lot of cities, and never have I been to such a cosmopolitan place with such a well-preserved fishing culture. Beyond Dubai's iconic sounds and sights, it's a shared passion of the water that truly opens its doors. After a trip like this, it's easy to focus on what we have in common rather than what separates us.